this business about integrated hypocrisy and by contrast God's decisions on how to integrate the horizontal with the vertical to make good on it is a pretty big story that we're not getting at least even when we're getting it it's like a shock once it starts to sink in and it takes a while at least it's taking me a while to understand it even though I can explain it doesn't mean I understand it what eventuates once the, the shock of it wears off and the understanding and reality sinks in is that the self rethinks what self is and I've said this a number of times in other sub episodes but I'm going to say it again I personally do not understand why I exist I can't justify my own existence. Every single day I say to God, why am I here? I know what the answer is, and I still say it. Because he doesn't need me. And if he doesn't need me, I can't see any justification for my existence. Now, you know, we all know the story. Jesus Christ paid for our sins. That's why I'm here. That's the only justifiable reason for me to be here. If he didn't pay, I couldn't exist. That's not only true for me, it's true for every human. But in my particular case, I've got a kind of arrogance that says, I'm so bad I shouldn't be allowed to exist. That's an arrogance, because it's not possible to be so bad. It doesn't mean that there's justification for existence. God had to create it, but he did create it. So I'm being arrogant to, you know, treat my own existence as if it weren't valid. If God created me and I exist, then it's valid. So my saying that it's not valid is an arrogance. You get that. Even so, there will be times when you come become so aware of your worthlessness that you're going to have this problem too. Or you become so aware of somebody else's or something else's worthlessness that you're going to question the validity of its existence. And you don't even have to go that far. You can look at events in history and say, how, what could possibly justify the rape of Nan King? What could possibly justify the occurrence of the Holocaust? What could possibly justify the existence of Adolf Hitler or Mao or Stalin? Because all three of those guys are each individual for the murder of millions upon millions of people. Now, they didn't actually commit those murders. They ordered them. Or they curried favor by getting other people to do those murders. That was more common. If you wanted to have power under Mao or have power under Stalin or have power under Hitler, one of the ways you got that power and influence was to kill people. That's why the concentration camps were so successful. Hitler didn't want them. He said something and everybody thought, oh, I'll get more favor with Hitler if I, if I do these concentration camps. That's why they did it. That's why they killed the Jews. Was to curry favor with Hitler of all people. That's really sick, you know. The great leap forward under Mao. That's why that was done. The Cultural Revolution was an outgrowth of the Great Leap Forward. Great, great Leap Forward was designed to find out who the dissidents were, and then in the Cultural Revolution they rounded them up. Stalin, he had his own little deal with the Kulaks. And what basically happened was is that if you wanted to curry favor with Stalin so you could get your own dacha or whatever the goodies were, then you went after the, the peasants. They weren't really peasants. They were, they were like well-to-do. They were called kulaks. They were better, better, sort of like middle class. You went after them. And then you curried favor. And before that, it was Lenin. 
you know, Lennon or Trotsky, but then Lennon and Trotsky, they both got into Donnybrook with each other, blah, blah, blah. It's a long story. I mean, you can name any power group in history and you've got something going like that. Okay, what about this power group? Power group of the world. You do what it takes to get ahead in this world. That's hypocrisy. All those things I've just talked about were hypocrisy. Okay, well then how do you get in with God? And the really, it, it really doesn't work. People try. That's what religion is for. Religion is basically designed to bribe God or wow God or impress God with whatever you can do. When there's nothing you can do, there is no justification for your life. But at the same time, he creates one. So you've got really two roads you can walk in this life. Hypocrisy or the road God makes for you to justify your life to you. That's really it. And we're all walking on one of those two roads at any given moment. Okay, my mother, my brother, my father, my sister. That's the hypocrisy road. Trying to please some human down here in order to get to impress them and gain approval. You might as well be walking to the Holocaust. Or you can orient to what God how God justifies your existence. It's a very different pattern of thinking. It's really hard to live with, either way. So you got one painful existence or another painful existence, take your pick. Okay, but at least with the God version, it's real. It has a really good payoff during and at the end. During because you know you're living for the right reason. You're living for something real. It's going to hurt one way or the other. Okay, so my existence is justified because A, Christ paid for me, First John 1, 7. Therefore, I can use 1 John 1, 9 and be in fellowship. But the actual justification in real time is what the Holy Spirit does to my head to grow me in Scripture, which pleases Father to hear it. I got a lot of scripture in my head at this point. Why? Well, I wanted to know. Okay, but I could want until I'm blue in the face. That isn't going to cause me to know. It's not my power that I know. It's his power that I know. It's what he did to my head to make me know. I can read Bible until I'm blue in the face, and that doesn't mean I learn a thing. And the proof of that is, look at all the theology and history and how bad it is. Those are all people trying to learn it on their own power, and they've learned exactly squat. About all they're good for is, and it's a substantial thing, I mean, what they're good for is they did a real good job in many cases with the lexicons and copying. And God bless them that they did that or we'd have no Bible at all. But how much did they grow spiritually? Not at all. Or very little. I mean, our theology is just completely puerile. I don't care if you're talking about the Christian side or the Jewish side. They're just, the incompetence is huge. So is the hypocrisy. That's why. But, like five-year-olds, they can copy letters. And God can, can, can enable you to do something even when you're out of fellowship. So we got good copies of scripture and we got good lexicons. And then when you read those things, he causes you to understand what you're reading. And he causes X number of pastors, even if they are out of fellowship, to be able to pass on certain information correctly. Evangelists, even if they're out of fellowship, that justifies their existence. Okay, so he's doing the same thing to you. 
to you and me. We're not, you know, maybe we don't have, you know, a communication gift like that. But he's doing something. And over the years, you find out what that something is. In my case, it's turning out, and it's a real surprise to me, the meter. So I have to look at myself, okay, Brainout's existence is justified because the meter exists. So now I brush my teeth because the meter. I wash the dishes because the meter. I try to get up on time and do my work on time and pay my bills on time because of the meter. Notice I can't justify it based on myself. I really can't. I, I, I cannot get up in the morning and say, oh, I have to do this for myself. That's not a good enough reason anymore. And if I say, well, I have to do it to obey God, what shoots that down is, oh, really? I can obey God? Seriously? Give me a break. Okay, that doesn't work anymore either. It used to. I used to be able to get up in the morning and say, oh, well, it serves God if I'm thinking Bible doctrine to get up. And if that works for you, fine. There's going to come a point where it doesn't work. Because there's going to come a point where you're going to get too sophisticated in your understanding and you're going to say, well, hell, he doesn't need me to think Bible doctrine for him. Somebody else can think it better than me, or just as well. So then there's still no justification for your existence. Okay, but now you got the next step to go. He put this doctrine in me. It lives in me. It does. It exists. And in this particular case, it's the meter, and I know nobody really knows it yet. Some are beginning to find it out now after 15 years. But I have to stay alive for that. I have to do things. I have to take care of what it is. Because it's here right now. Until he moves it or multiplies it elsewhere, I have to take care of it in here. Okay, okay well, what am I taking care of? Well, really nothing. Every move I make has to be something he enables. But he wants to enable it, so then I've got, as it were, an agenda. How I relate to the me. Well, the Bible doctrine is in me. He put it there. So i got to take care of it. So now I get up. Now I brush my teeth. Now I pay my bills. Now I wash the dishes. Now I do this. Now I do that. Otherwise, there's no justification. But he created the justification. You see that? He created it. So the orientation to the me is no longer hypocritical. The orientation to the me is no longer even associated directly with others, this world. It's vertical. He did this to me, therefore I must do X. That's a pathway. So now you begin to understand why Christ talked about himself in the third person so much. Calling himself son of man. He's orienting to his office. When you start to orient to what God did to you, you're orienting to an office. When you think about yourself as a parent, my children need this, my family needs that, you're orienting to the self in terms of your office. That's higher than personal. You're orienting to yourself in an impersonal way. But see, once you start to do that, and, you know, we all have a certain proclivity to doing that. But once you start to do that, you're going to have to, like, have something truly valuable to look at. People, you know, hyperventilate and hallucinate value out of themselves and then do this third-person thing. You got if the more you know God, the more you can't do that that their way. You can't use the hypocritical inflation technique. You got to have something real that really is valuable, that really is important, that you really didn't create, that you knew you know He created, and it's in you, and you know that too. Otherwise, you can't orient and keep going. You lose the motive. 
because it's not hypocritical, because it's not hallucinated. So that's one of the big reasons why getting Bible in your head is so important because after it does get in your head, you start to look at what it is in you and then the fact that your nothing is beside the point, it's there. And of course that does validate your existence. It's in you, he sees it in you. So you're just like a vessel, like Paul was talking about, what was it, Romans 9 treasure in earthen vessels. Okay, but it is really a treasure. It is really in you. It justifies your existence. And you're glad that it exists, and you don't want to exist apart from it. So now you really do have a reason to live. Now, in the final stages of spiritual maturation, this becomes front and center. Christ became the way, the truth, and the life. He valued himself not for himself. Like, oh, I'm important. I'm an important person. That's what a baby tries to do. No, he valued the truth that, that the Holy Spirit put in him. And he kept talking about himself as the third person for that reason. Partly. His office. And so he wanted to give everything to the office. Because it was there. Yes, it's in him. But the way he wants to use the self is to give to it. Or to the immature, this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. It'll seem, I don't know, selfish, egotistical. But the more you think about the offices that you have in life and how you actually do sacrifice for those offices, the more you'll realize, oh, wait a minute. If I really had the truth in me the way Christ had in him, then I'd want to do what he did. Yeah. And that's the goal of spiritual maturation, is to get you to have that same set of motives and the same, you know, set of truth. It won't be the same scope, but it will be the same, what do you want to call it, motive. Same idea. It'll just be less. Same thing, less of it. Okay, but then that's worth living for, and it's worth dying for. And that's really the goal, is to integrate you within yourself to this vertical truth that happens to be in you, and that becomes your reason for living, as well as to live to know God. It's got to be both, and I'm having trouble orienting to this. Living for Him, yes. But that's not enough. He doesn't want it to be enough because Psalm, what was it? Psalm 138 two. He puts the truth above his own name. He doesn't just live for himself. So he doesn't want us to live for him only either. The truth. Sacrifice everything you got for the truth. Because you want to. Well, but you have to come to value the truth then in order to do that. Because it's not supposed to be hypocritical. And then you're together with him in it. Well, that's saying a lot. And it sounds all romantic and stuff until you actually go through it. And there's nothing romantic about it in the actual event. But there couldn't be anything more profound either. So that's the opposite of integrated hypocrisy. But it sounds like a kind of hypocrisy. It sounds like self-aggrandizement. Especially to the uninitiated and especially to the ignorant. And the really hard part is they're always going to be ignorant. I mean, forever. In the eternal state, the amount that people are really going to have you know, knowledge of him is going to be really low much higher than it is now but much lower than it could be and if you've been learning and living on Bible that's not your status so there's a huge difference between you and average Joe both now and in the eternal state okay but you can't go back to where they are you can't be pleased any longer by the simple pleasures of this world 
okay? That's not enough for you. You can't hallucinate and be hypocritical like that anymore. You gotta have something else. Yeah, well, there it is.